Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Dirty Toilet, The Card Game. It plays two to four players, ages 13 and up, and takes about 30 minutes to play, with some not-safe-for-work content, I suppose. Uh, the game is basically about a town of Poopville, where the residents are basically having to undergo some dirty toilet problems. The toilets there are run amok with all kinds of nasty things, and you and other townsfolk have decided to clean up the toilets in the town, thusly removing the dirty toilets and finding clean toilets to replace them and thusly supplying the town with clean toilets. And of course, whoever gets the most clean toilets, up to five, in front of them in a full round is the winner of the game. It's a take that style card game in which you start with a certain number of cards in your hand and then you play a certain number of actions from your hand, whether it be to mess other players up in ensuring that you have the most clean toilets, providing clean toilets for yourself, getting rid of nasty things from your hand, and also playing things that cause messy problems on other players, thusly not allowing them to actually play the cards they want to play on their turn. If you played games kind of like Uno or other Take That style card games that mess players up, this one is very similar in nature, and I will show you down below how to play it, what it looks like, and then of course we'll talk about what I think about it. So here we have the game, The Dirty Toilet, The Card Game, and to set it up, you'll first shuffle this deck of cards, and then after that, you'll deal out eight cards to every player that is playing. Give them a player reference card each, and then, of course, this basic game play card explains how the goal is needed and how you need to win, and, of course, how to set the game up. After that, you can go ahead and set it aside. Then every single player is going to look through their hand for any clean toilets they may have and place them in front of them, because in order to win this game, you're going to need five clean toilet points. And in this case here, we, wow, three and a one, that's nice. He's got four there. Um, he's got four, and this guy has one here. To, so to begin the game, the player with the least clean toilets will go first. And in this case, it would be this guy here. If there was a tie, you would simply roll a die or flip a coin. Um, and then, of course, uh, these are the different actions you can play in the game. There's messy problems, there are dirty toilets or action cards, there are poop cards, and then there are power cards. You can play any number of these, but only one of each. So if you play a power card, you can only play this one here. If you play a messy problem, you can only play this one here. If you play a poop, you can only play this one here, unless it happens to be a super poop, in which case you can actually get rid of more than just one. And then, of course, the dirty toilet or the action card. So this guy's going to go ahead and go first, and I'll show you how a turn works. Well, the first thing they're going to go ahead and do is get rid of poos, because in order to win the game, not only do you need to have your toilets, but you also have to have no poos in hand. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now, if I play this here, the super poop, instead of discarding this one, I can discard this. And this says I can discard up to two poops. So I'll go ahead and get rid of these guys here. And then I can play an action card. So for instance, I can play a dirty toilet over that clean toilet, preventing it from counting as an end of game. Now I've played my poops, my action cards, I can play a messy problem and I can put it just like that. After that, the end of the turn is pretty simple. You'll draw two cards, check to see if you have any clean toilets, and then pass, and the next player will get a chance to go. Now, if you have a messy problem in front of you, you have to deal with that first, and if you cannot, you'll draw the number of cards that it has indicated, and then you'll discard it, and the play will pass to the next player. In order to deal with this exploiting toilet, this player is going to need to have four cleaners. If he has one, he has two, not enough, unfortunately, so he'll discard this card, and then he'll draw four toilet cards, putting them into his or her hand, checking to see if they have any clean toilets, placing them out, and then passing turn. And it's going to rinse and repeat like that. The next player is going to get a chance to go, discarding a poo, choosing to play something like an action card. This one will have some unique special effect that can steal or otherwise mess with another player. Or I can simply play this here, another dirty toilet, blocking that one out, drawing two cards, and then passing play. The next player here, there's no messy problems out, so now he or she can go ahead and discard a poo, play something like this on him. So now you've got a messy problem. Uh, I could play an action card of some some sort, and then I could also, if I, if I can, get rid of this guy here by either discarding two cleaners or a super bleach. And in this case, I have two cleaners, thusly getting rid of uh, this one here putting me back up to four toilets. And that's it, you just keep going back and forth up until the point where somebody gathers five toilet cards or five points in toilets and doesn't have any poos in their hand after the end of a round, and that player is determined the winner of the game, the dirty toilet, the card game. Pretty simple, straightforward, back and forth, take that card game, which involves a little bit of tableau management and keeping your toilets clean and protecting them from other players. Okay, so let's discuss this poo card game. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is some of the action cards and how they work. Like the air freshener, it allows all players to discard three cards and then draw three new ones. Uh, something like Super Bleach is going to get rid of a, a dirty toilet, as well as a dirty 
other <laughs> card. Some of these cards are a little crude, I suppose, but that's kind of the point, right? Um, it's got like, I guess, like teenage type humor, uh, poos and peas and, and so on and so forth. Unlicensed contractor, steal and use any opponent's clean toilets. So you can steal toilets from other players. Um, and then of course they have the variety of different poops in the game. Now the most important one is obviously going to be the super poop. This one here is going to allow you to discard multiple poops from your hand, thusly allowing you to win the game by having five clean toilets. But they've got things like the fairy poop and the greedy poop and the, uh, the, the panda poop and so on and so forth. Uh, they have really powerful cards like the toilet angel. This one here will let you uh, remove all dirty toilets in front of you and when in play no other action can negatively affect the uh, holder. It's a pretty powerful card. And then cleaners. Cleaners are very very important. They get rid of messy problems. They're able to remove certain dirty toilets and whatnot. They're, they're extremely useful but they're extremely sparse. You're very much likely to not have the cleaners that you need comparatively to the messy problems that are going to be around the game. And then like I said the dirty toilets. This one here covers up all of your toilets, preventing you from winning the game. So the two ways you're going to lose is by either placing cards uh, over the dirty, over clean toilets, those dirty toilets, or you have too many poops in your hand. Uh, it's going to be hard to keep discarding them, and getting rid of them. Uh, it has this like Uno feature. It's got those like take that mechanisms where it's like exploding pit kittens and, and that sort of style of play. Uh, drawing cards in this game is a benefit and a detriment because you could get clean toilets, which is what you need, and you can also get things like poos which is what you do not need. Uh, messy problems can benefit a player at, on the occasion because if you have three cards in hand and maybe no clean toilets, being able to draw four cards instead of the two that you normally draw at the end of the turn is actually potentially beneficial, but for the most part, it's not. Uh, there's lose a turn aspects in this game. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like games where you lose a turn. Sometimes it works fairly well, and this one's not so bad because your turns are really, really quick. But in a four-player game, losing a turn potentially over and over again and not drawing enough cleaners uh, is is kind of annoying. I don't like the idea of toilets, the, the toilets being... I'm constantly bombarded with stuff and I can't ever get rid of it. Uh, that being said, though, it, that's kind of how Uno can function too, right? Where you skip an opponent and then you can uh, pass their turn and then you can re re reverse your opponent and, and so on and so forth. So for those people who don't mind that style of mechanic... This game's not going to bother you in that regard. Uh, the artwork is uh, cute and obviously kind of gross at the same time, which is the, the, the point of it, right? You're attempting to have some fun humor along with some gross humor. It's got that like younger kid angle. And of course, uh, family members are able to play the game. It's not extremely complex as far as the game goes. You know what you need to do. It's just whether you get the cards or not. If you like funny humor, if you enjoy games that have a lot of take that mechanisms, messing with players, screwing with them, stopping them from being able to play certain things and preventing people from being able to win, you're going to enjoy this game. For those of you who do not like that style of game, you're obviously not going to like the style of game. For me, this is a game I would play specifically with my younger family members, my younger cousins, people that have that same sense of humor. There's definitely a audience for this type of a game. Uh, for me, it's probably right on the level. It's not a game I'd typically say, oh no, I wouldn't ever play that. But it's not a game I'd specifically pull out in any situation. This is going to have a direct specific audience for people who really enjoy this, the, the potty humor and the take that mechanisms because they can be extremely aggressive and, uh, you know, like extremely play playfully aggressive in which somebody's like ah dang it dang it dang it and it's constantly messing them over uh, but still on that regard like if you enjoy this type of humor if you enjoy the type of aggressive uh, actions and you also like the artwork and the fun mix of the different types of things that you put in the game the idea of being able to clean toilets and stuff like that is something I never actually realized as a concept but it actually works pretty well as far as this game goes you are attempting to get these toilets cleaned and of course going back and forth is uh, what you're going to be doing in this game. Uh, with four players, it plays better because there's more interaction, there's more silly antics that are going to take place, there's random things that can happen in random circumstances, there's certain cards you want to try and avoid and others that you really want to get. Uh, my one recommendation for the game is to probably add more cleaners and get rid of less, put less messy problems out, so thusly remove the amount of a uh, lack of turns players might get. But overall, a solid little take that party game. If you're interested, link is down below in the description, the Dirty Toilet Card Game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer. 
board or card game review for the Dirty Toilet card game. I'll link down below in the description. I don't know if it plays two to four or two to six players as the box and rules are different, but I imagine that the five and six variation is just going to cause uh, more commotion, more craziness in the game. I don't think it would affect it in any other way. Uh, you can also go ahead and check out Moonshell, a mermaid game coming out March 1st or March 2nd, March 2nd on Kickstarter. My wife's game, Kelly Wright, she's doing a Kickstarter for a Moonshell game involving seashells and mermaids and gathering shells and placing them on your board, trying to make combinations and whatnot. If you're interested in that, there'll also be a link down below there. You can also check out our Discord. You can check out our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one, link down below. And you can also go ahead and join us on Patreon. Thank you, Patreon members. I really greatly appreciate you guys supporting us. Sending you guys that stuff in the mail is always fun. I hope you guys get the great Moonshell stuff that should be coming in your doorsteps any minute now. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to not having to clean your toilets in Poop Town next time.